we just finished talking about temperament, which is a biologically based form of our patterns of behavior that emerges early on in infancy. And we know everyone's temperament is a little bit different, but we all tend to start expressing some emotional patterns in the same way early on in infancy. For instance, right at birth, we're really able to express sort of two modes. We tend to express attraction versus withdrawal. If you think about the temperamental dimension of approach and withdrawal, that's really what we're talking about here. There's some of us that are just more interested in keeping our eyes open and engaging with the environment when we're those itty bitty new newborns, whereas other of us will actually look away and we're overstimulated and we want to disengage, we want to withdraw. So those are really the first two kind of emotional mindsets we tend to display but quickly it gets a lot more complicated. By just two months of age, or sometimes earlier, sometimes about six or seven weeks after birth, we tend to see social smiles appear. And the social smiles are not just gas, they are truly social smiles and it's due to mimicry and imitation. And it's a really cool phenomenon where you see this little toothless grin. And it's really awesome because at this point, this is when we're still often really breathless and we don't coo completely yet. And so you have this little breath, uh, a little air taken, a little smile like hee, and it's really cute. By the time we're about three to five months of age, we actually start to show pleasure in a more mature way than we did with just smiles. We tend to have more of a giggle and more of a, the eyes start to smile as well as the face. And we start to light up a little bit more. You can see sort of a, an agitation in the arms as we show pleasure and other physiological components of pleasure. By about six to eight months of age, also our forms of displeasure start to come online and we start to show things like fear, sadness, and anger in lots of different ways. It starts off basic as one just type of displeasure, it's just upsetness, but then we start to show slightly different facial expressions when it's anger versus sadness versus fear. At first it's just crying and the crying face looks the same, but around this age we start to distinguish. And this is really when the sad face starts to have a lower lip and the angry face really starts to have the indented eyebrows and you really can start to distinguish between them. Now, this is really biologically set. We see all kinds of infants around the world following this trajectory, but we do see gradually us respond more and more to our social world. One researcher in particular who has looked at this has been Andy Melshoff, and he's shown here in this photo where he's really examining how imitation can start to come online very early. So social smiles start around two months of age, but right away from birth, we start to show lots of reflexive things. So in this image, you can see Metzhoff uh, displaying some facial features and the infant responding accordingly. I'm not positive about this, but I would estimate that, that infant is around two months of age. And so you can see with the tongue sticking out or the mouth open or a bit of a puckering or a grimace, the infant is responding. Now what's really fascinating about this is like we learned in unit three physical development, this is an involuntary reflex. The infant does not have control over this. It's not something they're consciously designing to do. It's completely reflexive. It seems to be evolutionary adaptive and that is the imitation allows and facilitates the caregiver offspring bonding. And we tend to really have an emotional bond feature going on. You might know some personal stories or personal anecdotes where there was a grandparent or an aunt and uncle who was the one who got the infant to stick their tongue up for the first time. And that was kind of their little story and a little bit of a bonding story with their infant. And so this is really good to help tie in the relationships and facilitate relationship development. Eventually, however, this reflexive imitation gets pruned away through synaptic pruning. And roughly around four months or five months of age, it actually disappears. And by sticking your tongue at an infant, they are not going to do it but it will come back in a more voluntary way later on in their first year of life. Roughly between nine months and 12 months of age, voluntary imitation actually comes back and they will start to do it and it's more conscious now. So this is when you start to see a nine month old who will look at you and when you're not necessarily smiling, because sometimes that's unconscious, but when you are sticking your tongue out or making a funny face or making a sound, they may try and mimic you. Or if you wave your hand, they may try and mimic you. So voluntary imitation starts to come online around the end of the first year of life. What always happens though is social referencing. Even if we can't imitate, we may social reference. And this is something where you might not do exactly what the other person's doing, but you're taking in their emotional point and you're reflecting it. So we see this if an infant goes to a coffee shop with their parent and they're looking around, there's lots of sights and sounds and the parent is happy. The infant's more likely going to be relaxed and happy versus if they see the parent is stressed or neutral or cautious, the infant's more likely to cry. 
This is why when you're on an airplane and you're really stressed out, the infant is more likely to cry. They feed that off of you and they see the facial expressions. Who knows, maybe they're smelling our pheromones too. We haven't really determined that, but it's the idea that they can sense what's happening with you and they will reflect it. So social referencing is really important. We see this through the whole lifespan. When you see a six-year-old child going somewhere with their parents and it's something new, the six-year-old child will look to their parents to see their expression. Or if you're on a plane and it's just a dulce in the plane and you hit a bit of turbulence, we tend to look to each other to see if we should be freaking out or not. And if everybody else is staying calm, you're going to stay calm. If a couple other people are like, oh, oh, oh my goodness, you're more likely to get tense about it. So social referencing is something we pick up really early on in infancy and we use it adaptively throughout our lifespan, but sometimes maladaptively as well. Another big emotional milestone that happens in the first year of life is the starting of two different types of anxiety responses. The first one is known as stranger anxiety, and this happens first, roughly around four months to six months of age. And what's really going on here is not so much the absence of a parent, but the presence of a stranger. So what goes on with stranger anxiety is the parent is still there with the infant, and let's say they take them to a family gathering, a family barbecue, a baby shower, wedding shower, what have you, somewhere where people like to bring their babies, and they bring the baby and they're still there, but when the baby sees all these new faces, they start to have a very negative and salient response. At this age, we're still starting to distinguish between fear and sadness and anger, and so it is more of a general upsetness. But the type of cry we tend to hear is just more of an upset cry. And so what happens here, it's not that the parent isn't there anymore, it's just that they don't like the new people, they're unsettled by the new people. And regardless of our temperament, regardless if you're high in approach or low in approach and very high in withdrawal, we all tend to experience this around this age, but the infants who are high in approach tend to experience a more mild version of this versus the infants that are low in approach tend to experience a much more severe form of this. And this is the idea that if you take the baby, and especially when you take them to the parties and everybody wants a chance to hold the baby or cuddle the baby, they don't respond well to this at all and they're very not interested in that activity. A couple months before, they would be fine with that, but now it's a no-go, it's not fun for them. So stranger anxiety is really responding negatively to the presence of a stranger. In comparison, separation anxiety comes on later, starting around nine months of age and continuing much longer, up to two years of age. And this is really not responding to the presence of a stranger, but responding to the absence of a familiar caregiver. Most often the primary caregiver, well, most often is the bio mom. And so what happens here is it's not so much the new person is bothering them, that actually tends to fade around six months of age somewhat. And so what's going on here is they're okay with the stranger being there. But as soon as they feel like their parent has left or they see their parent actively leaving, that's when they start to cry and become very upset. And the upsetness is more of a combination of sadness and fear. It's, it's not an angry cry necessarily, but it's a more like, no, don't do this. Why are you leaving? I don't like this sort of cry. And so we're going to talk more about this when we get to attachment. But what we find is infants are really good at watching their caregivers and keeping an eye out for them. And if they walk to the washroom or walk to the laundry room or have to leave to go, go somewhere with the car, even if there's other caregivers home, the infants will see this. And when they see their caregiver walking out of the room, they will begin to cry and begin to get upset. It can be very exhausting for the caregiver and very guilt inducing for the caregiver, but it is a typical response and they're not doing anything wrong. Uh, it just has to go with some of the other cognitive and social milestones we're hitting at this point in time. 